Hi YouTubers, Dave out in Western Pennsylvania. I'm a chem prof with a university in Western Pennsylvania, USA. I work with synthetic fuels. Recently I've been developing synthetic gasoline formulations for use in small engines. Here today I'm in the lab and I have set up here in the fume hood a fractional distillation. Actually I'm not, no, with this one I'm not collecting fractions. I'm doing uh, a relatively simple quick and dirty distillation of drip gas. Now drip gas, here I'll show you the pot, that's the round bottom flask with the uh, drip gas. The other name for it is condensate or natural gasoline and this is donated from MSL Oil and Gas Corporation here in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Here's a batch, a little less than two liters of the drip gas and it's from a condensate wellhead, natural gas wellhead drilled down five to ten thousand feet and uh, it looks like it's refluxing boiling violently but we're really just above we're probably just by feel about 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. I started doing the distillation yesterday it distilled a little bit you could see this clear liquid coming over and uh, the natural gasoline has a research octane number of about 30 to 50. It depends on the well, it depends on the location in the world. And uh, I have two condensers set up. This one's about two foot vertical and I've got another a little over a foot long. They're water cooled and the receiving flask is simply immersed in ice water and clear distillate coming over. Now I've done a smaller scale distillation. Hopefully you can see this. On the left, you'll see the pot residue. What was less left, which has a boiling point over 150 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 98, usually Celsius here in Bradford because we're not at sea level. And that's about 10% of the total volume that has a boiling point above 150. It could be a lot of things. It could be longer chains. Most of the natural gasoline that I'm collecting uh, there's some volatile propane, ethane that comes over. It's mostly pentanes, some hexanes, and then the cut with 10% uh, residue, that probably has longer chains, maybe some uh, allocyclics, cyclics, um, hydrocarbons. Next to it you can see a cut from 100 to 150, that's the gasoline range, clear liquid, and uh, a smaller cut which went from uh, body temperature is so up to 100 Celsius and there's a small quantity of the natural gasoline before distillation. We have, I'll show you over here, a gas chromatograph hooked up to a mass spectrometer so we'll be characterizing the uh, drip gas and uh, try to get an idea of the profile of it and as I said the research octane number motor octane would be 30 to 50 probably the local refinery will be kind enough to uh, determine that value for me. And of course this material could be taken and then converted into isomerate in a refinery and that would get your octane, research octane number up to about 70. And what I'm hoping to do, well, first of all my students in my intro to fuels class will distill this natural gasoline to develop a feel for distillation. And what I will do is take the material that distills over and with renewables try to get that octane number up to uh, 87 for small engines. Now in the pre-World War II era with lower compression engines, tractors and cars could actually run on many natural gasoline cuts. Not all, it depends on the well, but uh, in Oklahoma for example th during World War II they, people were pulling right up and uh, filling up the car with natural gasoline and away they went. Not so now with the higher compression engines, of course. But I'll be uh, using, for reasons I'm not going to get into with you now, um, isopropyl butyrate ester, methyl formate, turpentine distillate, which is alpha pinene, uh, one and two butyl alcohols, renewables that I'll be blending with the natural gasoline to try to get to an 87 octane for use in small engines. So if you're going to ever distill drip gas, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated uh, area. You should ideally be doing it in a fume hood. 
because when you first start heating you will definitely get some volatile hydrocarbons escaping and you don't want that in the room this is highly flammable material but uh, you can actually see I don't have a thermometer in there I went to put in a 1030 ground glass thermometer and couldn't find one so I had to order a couple so I have a cork in there right now but I generally know from the smaller distillation that I can uh, bring this up to about 150 degrees Celsius and anything from 30 degrees up to 150 even 200 uh, would would certainly be in the gasoline uh, range so there you have it a vertical condenser water cooled a horizontal condenser and uh, distilling over do I have to do any desulfurization I'll probably run it through a column and desulfurize Oh, definitely there's sulfur, thiol, sulfides in there. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll keep you posted, guys. Bye for now.